Anna, congratulations. Thank you so much. It's so nice to see you. It's so lovely to see you. Academy Award nominee, producer, <laughs> writer, actor, and director. Oh, my God. I, I, does that I love sound? how deep your voice got well, right that, at the end there. That's my voiceover. Yeah, that's your kick-ass voice. I had a cinema near you. Yeah. With Anna I should have had you do the trailer. Jeez. Next time. Next time. <laughs> how does it feel? Um, it's overwhelming, yeah. and I and I feel um, I it's weird. I, I wasn't expecting to feel. I was expecting to feel really nervous about directing the yeah, movie. Yeah. I was not expecting to feel like nervous doing press for the movie because I'm. Hey, I've been doing press a long time. Yeah. You know, I, I, this should be this should be no problem. <laughs> but um, it feels like very vulnerable. It just feels like any second now someone's gonna rush in and go. She doesn't know what she's doing. <laughs> Get her out of that chair. She didn't really direct. Yes, it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Big question. What does the director think of Anna, the actor? And Anna, the actor, <laughs> think of the director? It's so, I mean, I know I know you're being a little silly, but yeah. I, like, honestly, there was part of me that was going like, well, hey, like, there's going to be a million problems every single day, yeah. but at least I know the director and the lead actress are going to be on the same page. Like, honestly, like, it's a little <laughs> silly to say that, but I, I, there were times where it was like, it's it's kind of like one less thing I have to think about. People, uh, people kept asking me, like, if it was going to be hard and wasn't I worried about doing it, but I think I would have been more worried about trying to get the material in my brain into someone else's brain and have them like agree to go along with it because yeah. Um, yeah there were some like odd things that I wanted to try so uh, yeah it was it was like one less person I had to convince to give a yeah. certain performance you didn't give yourself notes um no I mean <laughs> only in, I think I do think that there are like I could probably put together a compilation of me mid scene going ah oh, Kendra come on come on I'm sorry okay wait no 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 let's save her the top okay yeah um like yeah having a bit of like a Gollum and Smeagol talk with myself oh and true crime I mean it's so of the moment isn't it is that something you've into. Yeah, I, I've always been a, a true crime fan, um, uh, but I think that my relationship to true crime changed. Uh, you know, I had some things happen in my life that um, kind of changed the way that I viewed true crime, which uh, it, it turned into this weird outlet to kind of sublimate all of my kind of internal troubles um, and as though like if I could solve a case you know <laughs> through like internet sleuthing or something <laughs> you know something inside of me would be resolved and I mean if anything I would say that my favorite part of this script was really that while it is a fascinating true crime story mm. um, it was a very emotional script mm. and and I I was blown away by the way that every single cast member and every crew member showed up with so much reverence for the material and respect for, for what we were doing. Because mm -hmm. what was great was you, you gave it a different viewpoint. So it wasn't focusing on him as, yeah. much as the women. Yeah, and, and look, as somebody who really values great performances, mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I have to give so much credit to Danny, the actor, because he had to show up and give unbelievable performances you know almost every day mm. of, of filming while also knowing that he wasn't really going to be the center of the movie or, or really even the center of any particular scene um, but that didn't mean he got to show up and kind of phone it in yeah. you know um, he, he delivers an unbelievable performance um, but I'm very happy that uh, that a lot of the feedback that I've gotten is mostly about all the women in the movie. Yeah, and the, and the strong performances and strong women. I mean, there's a, there's a wonderful scene which I think is is just perfect. It's the bit during the the dating game show when you're sitting there and they've given you all these cheesy lines yeah. and all the rest of it, and then it's like, nope, I'm gonna go my own way in this one. Yeah. And and I was watching that. I was thinking, no, actually, during those days, that's what would have happened. Not, not you. Probably no one would have had the balls, if I can be. Yeah. You know, to do what you actually did. Yeah. No. Um. It, that's so interesting because, uh, you know, there is some footage of this episode of the dating mm. game that exists online, but, um, the entirety of that footage appears to have been kind of lost to time, and so uh, we got to really imagine, um, you know, what 
what was in that footage. And it was probably not what's in the movie, but <laughs> it's almost like that section of the film is is like a fantasy film. Yeah. And um and it's this uh beautiful thematic moment because it's so kind of thrilling to see a woman in this in the world of the movie to see a woman rebel a bit and mm. take up some space and take back her power. But what I love about it is that while it's kind of thrilling to watch it happen, you, the viewer, knows that it's getting my character closer and closer to danger. Because mm -hmm. um, I think there are um, wonderful conversations happening now about uh, women uh, being forced into kind of people-pleasing roles um, and, you know, taking back our power and asserting ourselves. But the truth is that sometimes it's still not that simple mm -hmm. um, and it can put you in harm's way. Um, so I, I love the duality of that part yeah. of the movie. I mean, you know, you're still very young, but have been around for a long time. What have you seen the progression? I mean, do you think we're we're getting somewhere now in terms of the, of the, that that narrative? Yeah. Well? No, I think I think so, and I think um, every now and then I'll remember like the, you know. Well, I was about, God, I was about to say like, oh, the the silliest thing, the smallest thing that happened like pre Me Too, but. I guess at the time it felt like the silliest thing and the smallest mm. thing and and it's actually kind of shocking how just normalized certain things were that now we would find unacceptable and if anything I'm glad to see that it seems like you know the the really younger generations um are are aware of what that backslide might feel like um and not and there doesn't appear to be a willingness to kind of shrug it off as though it was nothing and as though we could never end up back there. Mm. What I love is because you're you're petite, <laughs> if, I, if I could say that, but I love the fact you use it like a superpower. And I know that it's inspirational because I know I have a girlfriend who's the exact same size. <laughs> and, and the amount of times people are going, Diana Kendrick, Look, that's how you do it. And I, and I imagine as well when you're directing, because obviously it goes back to your childhood when you had the big voice, et cetera, et cetera. I know. I was, as you were saying it, I was about to be like, do you mean that my superpower is that I'm incredibly loud? Because <laughs> I, I, I would agree. Like, I, again, like we're being silly, but there's part of yeah. me that would agree. I know. Uh, I, I think I introduced, like on the first day of filming, uh, I sort of introduced myself to everyone. I was like, if there's anybody that if there's anybody here that I haven't already met and you have a question, I'm the short brunette with the very shrill voice, like you can't miss me. <laughs> so just come find me and I'll probably answer your question at a decibel that's uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> it's a brilliant way to do it. And how, did you feel that over the years that you, you almost had to compensate or? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I think I was always like the shortest, the smallest kid in class, you know, and of course, when you're, you know, 11, you don't mm. want to be the smallest and the shortest. You want to sort of prove that you're tough and you're grown up, even though I was further, you know, the furthest thing from tough or grown up. Um, but I, I really sort of developed this um, this bark that is much bigger than my bite, but uh, the bark has served me pretty well. Although sometimes it doesn't, but mostly it does. Are you are you a big action? Are you one of those? Oh yeah, well I'm a big action, and but I'm also a big, um, who's ready? Shout it out if you're ready. <laughs> Just constantly going like, what's, what's, what are we waiting for? Oh. I'm sort of loud and impatient, I guess. But it was the only way to get the movie done. You know, we had 24 days and it was a very, very ambitious movie for having 24 days. So sometimes you just got to, you know, communicate quickly. And sometimes the most effective way to do that is to be very shrill. <laughs> I've got to ask you, I'm Scottish. Alan Cummings, an old pal of mine. You were spotted at the Traitor's Castle. Don't you love that show? Love it. Oh my God. I love the UK version. Yeah. I love, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I love Claudia with yeah. him and love Alan. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, oh my gosh, I just, I couldn't love that show more. Um, so I, I literally just went to the set because I'm a super fan. Like it wasn't really? any, it wasn't like any, I'm not like involved in the season at all. Uh -huh. um, and I was, I was in Europe filming and I sort of, they were like, do you want to just like come over and see? I was like, absolutely I do. And I even, I don't think I'm supposed to say this, but they let me into the control room to see all the, the cameras and stuff. Oh my God, it was so cool. The way they make that show is unbelievable. Traitor or faithful? Oh, faithful. I couldn't, I'm, I'm, no, no, no. I, 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 I might, I might be a decent performer, but I'm a terrible liar. I just, I'm sweating even at the suggestion of being a traitor. I think that even if I were a faithful, I would end up looking like a traitor because I'd be so paranoid that people thought I was a traitor. I would be awful on that show, but I love watching it. 
Congratulations, Anna Kendrick, director. <laughs> so lovely to see you. So nice to see you. Thank you so much, Thank Anna. You very Congratulations. Much for that.